I think briefly I want to try and talk about, uh, you know, I, I know I'm late to this. Uh, I initially sat out to make a video about this a couple of weeks ago. And I didn't get it done, so here I am now talking about it. Um, and, you know, my opinion on this, or it's not even my opinion, it's my experience, is that uh, you're not going to lose all your gains. If you come off, you know, I'll try to make it short and sweet. Um, I know Jerry is like adamant. You'll lose all your gains. Well, I mean, you know, it's, bro, did you not make any natural gains? What do you mean? You're going to lose everything like before you started lifting or whatever the case may be. Did you not make any gains naturally? You know what I mean? You just fall out of the womb and start using gear. I mean, when I discovered weightlifting, it was to rehab an injury, uh, actually. And I just liked what it had, was doing, the way I responded. And so I continued and wanted to do more of it. I have lots and lots of years lifting naturally. And then it's the time period, too. I'm, I'm older than most of these guys, man. you got to understand, now, I'm like C.T. Fletcher's age. You know, what's he got? Uh, a few months on me? You know? And when I first started, that information wasn't out there. That knowledge wasn't out there. It wasn't like people didn't really know what that shit was. How would you? There was no internet. If there was no internet, would you know what it is? You know, it wasn't any of that kind of shit. And so it's always been, always been befuddled, uh, contemplating, you know, do people now, today, because of the internet, do they turn to lifting weights and immediately want to become a drug addict? I don't understand this, you know, a drug abuser. You know, I didn't. In my day, that's not how it was. You developed a passion just for working out, just for lifting weights, you know. And so, and that kind of ties into when, and I'll probably make a separate video about this, when people are adamant about talking about, well, these guys on gear and built all this muscle on gear. They don't know how to train naturally. That doesn't work. Let me tell you something. My training has evolved more because of just experience and development. Experience and development has contoured my training into what it is today and, and became in later years, as opposed to when I started out and had much less muscularity. And you have less muscularity, you have less access to muscle because it's not there. It's not there, but the longer you train, the more access you have to the muscularity you develop, the musculature that you develop. And so you begin to more focus in and be able to get uh, be able to get more profitable workouts, and that's natural or not. You know, so a lot of the exercise choices and selections I make uh, in later years that people have seen me make are not only have have everything to do with being enhanced that's not you know the only criteria why I would choose the exercises I selected the approaches that I selected but also just because as I got more muscle I have better access and what I mean by that is these isolation exercises for instance a lot of these isolation exercises when you get to a certain degree of size that's the way to go for a bodybuilder it just is because, and, and, in, and then again, it's relative. What do you mean by size, right? One guy's big is another guy's not so big. You understand what I'm saying? One guy look at a guy and say, man, he's really, he's really big, he's diesel. And the other guy would be like, really? You know, so it all depends on your perspective, right? It's all relevant to the window that you're viewing things through. And at my, at my stage, once I had enough musculature, these isolation exercises, I can make them more effective and efficient because I have more access, I have greater access to the musculature that I, that I own, that I possess. 
You know, so when I'm attempting to work, you know, do exercises designed to primarily um, accentuate one head of a tricep on a tricep um, uh, complex over the other two, I can actually zone in better because I have more muscle even in that one head now than when I began to contract. Do you understand what I'm getting at? And I can actually move more weight. I can actually move some weight without compromising form. You know, so it's, it, you have to be there. If you're there, you're there, and if you're not, you're not. So that's why one thing, it changes. So if I can do, you know, a number of isolation exercises with the tricep, for example, just because it's a really good example. I already have that overall large development that was achieved with free weight compound-oriented exercises. Um, if I already possess a great deal of musculature from that, then to go to the next level now, I want to work more independently as much as possible because that's what's going to really make things pop. And I'm better able to do that than I would have been from day one. From day one, I can't do that. I don't have the musculature to access. Can't do that. You can't even see three different heads from day one. You just see that that's the back of my arm and the general area my tricep should reside. You know, so why am I going to be doing isolation exercises when I can't even see what's there, much less flex what's there, contract what's there? Understand what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, you're better off to do more of an overall type of thing, right? But later on, and then again, I'm going to say this too, the weights that you begin to move, if I were going to use like my entire tricep to move a weight, like for instance, seated French presses, right? The weight that I might want to use, yes, is precarious on my elbows then because it's just too much weight for the biomechanically, it's just too much weight. I mean, people have really actually have some of these busters. They really have no idea. They don't have this size. Do you see anybody with a lot of size saying this same similar bullshit that these clowns are saying? No. These dudes don't know. They have no first-hand knowledge. Okay? And the same thing. Same application there. No first-hand knowledge. That, that applies when you're talking about these guys that are saying you're going to lose all your gains. They know their experience. They lost all their gains. They lost all their gains. You know. Because it's your reality doesn't mean it's everybody's reality. It's your experience. It doesn't mean it's everybody else's experience. Some realities are reality. You know. Um, if you climb up on a roof and you say you're going to jump off and flap your arms and fly. It's a reality that you're going to hit the ground. I can tell you now, I don't have to first-hand experience it. I can tell you, no, you're not. I don't, that's not going to work. You understand? But you, if somebody says, now, if somebody had that musculature and they said, well, I disagree. That wasn't my experience. My experience was this. Then respect. I can respect that was your experience. Because there's so many different factors you know we're all there's so many different things that make it an individual experience and that's one of the things that I really was attracted to about lifting weights in the first place it's not a team effort um, the work that I put in directly directly correlates to the benefits I receive you know but um, you know, the bullshit about you're going to lose all your gains, you know, I would challenge and say, did you not acquire any natural gains? I mean, you lost that. Did you lose that too? What do you mean? You know, and then some of these guys, man, they rewrite their own history. Um, they were 300 pounds. They were 270 pounds. They were how much fat and how much bloat? was that because I ain't seen no I have neither have I seen nor do I know anybody who has seen that of you you know I mean everybody knows <laughs> when I've been 280 ish 
and this hasn't been since I've been on YouTube. This is before. 280-ish, 290. Almost well, hard. Well shaped. You know? Good definition at that weight. That's not the same as Joe Blow, who was for five minutes too, a big bloated mess, basically. At 270-ish or whatever. So people's experiences are different, man. They're different. And yeah. people, if you come off and lose all your gains, you did something wrong. Something drastically wrong. But I understand if that was somebody's experience, if they came off and lost all their gains, I understand why they would believe that if they jump back on a big cycle, they could put some size on because it's tempting to them. They need to be on a big cycle to put some size on. Again, people that are close to me that really know me, and if you ask me, I'll tell you. It's not like it's a secret. It's not like it's a secret. I mean, if, if you know me, you know that I'm an individual, and I'm my own man. And I don't give two shits, you know, about any kind of false presentation or false impression somebody might have of me or like me or think more of me because something's not even real. I don't give a shit about that because my own sense of self-worth and self-esteem self does not hinge upon any other man's opinion of me. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if, if I'm a POS, then I know that. It doesn't matter if the world thinks I'm a great guy. And pats me on the back and says, oh, you're an awesome guy. I still have to look at me in the mirror. I still have to go to bed with me at night in my head. And I know I'm a P.O.S. But that's not the case. So the inverse is true, too. If, if, if people want to think bullshit that's not true about me, it doesn't affect me. I mean, a lot of people say that, but their behavior otherwise belies that that's not really how they're feeling. Now they're not, they're not really walking around that enlightened. So I'm one guy, and I'm not the only guy, but I can only speak for me because that's my personal experience. And there's no need to bullshit anybody. None at all. If I had to take grams to look like this, I would tell you. If I had to take a gram to look like this, I would tell you. But see, I've already been to my pinnacle. And I'm far, far removed from that. I'm a shadow of me at my best. I'll never be as strong. I'll never be as aesthetic. I'll never be as big. I'm never going to be that again. I can't measure up to me at my best anymore. I can never do that again. can't repeat that. You know, so what do you think I'm going to sacrifice my health to try to be the best, lesser version of me I can be? No, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I had my, you know, I had my fun. I did my thing. You know, today, like I've told you a million times, you know, I'm a 300 milligram a week guy. And even in that, even in that, I do kind of like, and I shouldn't even be telling you this, but I don't give a shit. Case in point, I don't give a shit. That's what I'm telling you. I kind of do like a mini blasting cruise where over the course of seven days, sometimes longer now, to tell you the truth, right now it's been like 14 days without another um, administration because I just, I get bored with it. And I also go by the mirror, I'm looking at myself and I'm like, eh, doing all right, I don't need it. And how I feel. But I'll run typically Nowadays, in seven days, I'll be 300 MIGs total. And out of that 300 MIGs, 125 of that will be anything. That's a bed. And the remainder of that is a combination of two different types of probes. So, you would think that doesn't even make sense. Because they're all administered together. One shot. You know, um, one milliliter. One day a week. So you would think, that doesn't even make sense. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. I don't care if you think it's stupid. But you don't really know. So, you know, what it does, just in the course of the week, I got that little constant bed. And then I have, boom, 
boo. Boo, boo. So what does that do? Gives me a big bang out of that little bit of stuff. Now that's me, that's my experience. Maybe the next guy would do nothing for, but I kind of doubt it. I don't tend to think that I'm some kind of special, you know, some kind of uh, elite specimen. I think then, you know. Anyway, anytime I'm telling you any of this kind of bullshit, I'm just telling you what my experience is. And a reason to lie or bullshit you. And it's just something that I'm, I happen to be good at. Like I've said before, you're not going to see me making videos about carpentry and shit because ain't no good at it. No, sir. First cue is stick to what you really know. Stick to what you know, man. And the more insulted anybody is by that, it just shows their own arrogance. Because your experience isn't my experience. Believe that. Believe that. I gotta go to bed. I can decide if I want to post this or not, because if it comes off, I think it's a little bit mean. You know, I won't post it. It says what it is. You guys have an awesome evening.